This is tin 1, this is tin 2. This tin holds more of my essential items, my core survival items. This tin holds more of my supplemental and experimental items. This is my main spy kit and it holds the secondary tin, which is tin number two. This shows tin two being worn on my belt using my parafob wrap. It's attached to my survival keychain. Well, here's a quick update for people following the Bic Lighter mod. It has a protective sheath made from uh, what do you call it? Heat shrink tubing, and that keeps the tape from getting gunky in hot weather. Tin 2 is removed by pulling it off the belt. And then we remove the parafob wrap. I've removed the black electrical vinyl tape from the exterior, which keeps the tin watertight. Let's now examine what's in tin 2. I try and keep everything black to keep it as stealth as possible in low light conditions. On this top layer, we have a piece of black Gorilla Tape, which can be peeled away from this uh, material so I can use all of the tape. It acts as a gasket. Uh, not perfect, but uh, along with the electrical tape, it helps keep dust and moisture out. It's just a piece of paper, but I figured it might as well have something on it, so it's a list of the most commonly used passwords making it easy to break into uh, locks and uh, password protected material. Here's a, uh, I laminated it with a clear tape. It's a Morse code. And it's good for signaling, which I can do with some of the devices coming up later. Here's an alcohol swab, good for cleaning surfaces that you want to apply tape or a sticker to. Also can obscure fingerprints if you get them on some surface. <clears throat> This is one of the plastic bags I show in my videos, <coughs> pardon me, to uh, hold water, but it also can just be a plastic bag to hold anything you want, uh, so it's quite useful. To help get rid of this glint, I'm going to put down a piece of gray cloth, and I'm going to prop up the tin to keep this level, just with this as an impromptu uh, little device to help keep it uh, level. Can test it with this. These little plastic tubes I make, by the way, also can kind of act as uh, bubble levels in a sense. Uh, very crude, but they do work. This is a uh, sewing awl needle. It lets me sew material using a lock stitch, uh, using, for instance, the inner strands of the paracord, but it also lets me pierce any material that I need to make a hole in. For instance, say I need to make a hole in something to use my, my pinhole camera that's part of my uh, part of my cordless 2.4 gigahertz video system that's kept in my main main kit. This is my MacGyver Super Tool, also called an insulated paper clip. Uh, it can be an electrical conductive wire, but paper clips have a lot of applications. This is my necklace, for lack of a better term. It allows me to wear things around, uh, around my neck, say for instance, if I want to climb a fence, but I need one of these devices quick and easily accessible. I can keep this around my neck. I also could make, I suppose, a wrist lanyard with it. This is the only uh, clear tube with liquid in this kit. Uh, this is filled with uh, oil for lubricating knives, hinges, stuff like that. It also has the bubble mark uh, lines on it for acting as a bubble level. But it's oil, so the bubble moves very slowly. You want to use liquids that aren't so viscous if you are making these to be bubble levels. Here's a uh, safety, safety pin. This is a piece of... Uh, 
glue stick, which I have this backing on it so that I can peel this away and I melt this. Uh, the backing is just to keep it black so that when I, in the kit it doesn't reflect and I can melt this with the lighter coming up in a bit. Things in the kit that aren't black I've blackened, I've made black. For instance, this is my uh, desiccant pack from a, a vitamin pill container and I've covered it with black uh, Sharpie pen ink. This is a, a quick release for the necklace for the tool of choice that I have around my uh, neck. I think they call these, not alligator clip, I forget their exact term for it. This lets, my t lets me turn the uh, chain into a conventional chain. It uh, lets me mount the ball at the end. So that I have a traditional uh, circle at the end. Uh, one thing about ball chains that's a little odd is that you can't mount them to anything until you attach one of these to them and then you have a traditional uh, mounting circle. Here's the second one of those, so I have one for each end. This is one of the things in my kit that makes it illegal to carry on the street. Uh, these are ninja rocks. I made it from a spark plug and they're just in a plastic bag with some blackening. Uh, you can look up what ninja rocks do elsewhere. This is a uh, flashlight. It's a Prion 1 uh, head but uh, it's on an ITP body and it has various uh, brightness settings including uh, strobe, good for attention getting, and it has SOS. This is the world's smallest space pen. If I showed something else in a video and said it was the world's smallest, well strike that. This is the world's smallest. It's a, a space pen refill. This is a combination pen clip top, but if I flip it around it then becomes a body. If I can do this I'm a little jittery from all the coffee I've been drinking. This makes it full, not full length, but long enough so that it touches up here, which is nice. Flip it around and it's a pen cap. This is made from a coffee stirrer. It's not just a tube, it's got some stuff inside that uh, acts as a stopper. This is the line generator for the laser we'll be seeing in a moment. We'll get to that in a bit. This is the lighter, which can melt the uh, glue, the the uh, glue from the glue gun stick, and it's electric and windproof. Uh, it makes very little spark, which is nice uh, compared to a normal lighter, which makes a easy to locate you at night spark. So you certainly don't want to be doing that if you're on a spy mission. I like that this lighter is just the length of the case and super skinny and small, and windproof. This is a red colored, uh, what do they call these, Sialume sticks, and it's blackened on one side with gaffer tape so that it only illuminates in one direction, good for spy applications. Uh, it's a Sialume stick that if put inside a clear straw, uh, you snap this and then you have emergency red light, good for uh, night vision preservation. This is my memory card. It's a USB card reader and inside we have a 32 gigabyte memory card. This is different than the one I show in the other videos. On a spy mission you could download data for instance from your enemy's computer onto this or upload a virus or a key, keystroke logger, uh, all sorts of applications. This is a uh, nylon wire cable tie with a mounting hole up top so I can attach things to it. Toothpick. This 
This is my knife inside the belt clip part. I have a rubber band. It just seemed like a good place to store the rubber band. What I like about this knife is that it is very skinny. And uh, what's nice about it is that it can store inside the kit. It's the length of the kit and it can store this way in the tin. Very few of my knives are fit that description. This is a uh, Sanren Mew. And I was able to keep the uh, belt clip on it, which is nice. Nice being able to have a full size knife and an full size knife in an Altoids tin. These are twist ties. You can seal the bag, for instance, the uh, plastic bag, if you were filling it up with something. This is just a split ring. If I'm making a necklace out of uh, keychain devices, this may help. This is a tripod mount uh, for a camera. You screw this to the uh, camera. You then mount a chain or a cord, for instance, that black cord. This is a larger size one that's kept in my main full kit. This is long enough to drop to the ground, step on it, pull it taut, and then that, that acts as a uh, reverse monopod. Rather than tension going down to the ground, the tension is being pulled up from the ground. This is my laser. We'll be talking about this in a little bit. I see the end has screwed off. Let me screw that back on. This is my uh, universal tool. I think it's made by Schrade. I forget. Uh, you've got a pry bar, belt cutter, bottle opener, hex wrench, uh, other size wrenches, and it's titanium, so it's very lightweight. This is a thumbtack. This in combination with the rubber band uh, can actually open up a certain kind of door lock, but I'm not gonna teach you about that because that's illegal. This is just a plastic uh, subway pass card from a long time ago. Helps act as a shim for certain kinds of locks. This is a razor blade, probably one of the most useful items for a small little portable kit in terms of usefulness or size and weight. This is a reflective mirror. It's not meant as a signaling mirror, but if I need to build something, for instance, I need to reflect a laser or reflect a small AAA battery light, this little uh, mirror helps do that. This is one of my multi-screwdrivers. This one's made by Sears, and it has even a very large uh, screwdriver tip, even bigger than most full-size Leathermans, which is kind of interesting. This is a pin. Uh, hacksaw blade for cutting through metal. Uh, cut at a point. I cut it in a large cutter so that I can also pierce material with it. There's another paper clip. This is a lock pin tumbler tension tool. Helps for picking locks. Uh, this, I think, also is going to make this kit illegal in certain states to carry this. I made this out of a street cleaning brush bristle that I actually just found on the street. This is another universal screwdriver. Uh, this one's made by, by Victorinox. Uh, comes as part of their kit. They call this a quattro because it has four tips. But one of them, the uh, larger one here for Phillips, actually will work with both a number one and number two Phillips. That actually gives it five different screwdriver tips and a very small, small device. And I like that it fits the tin upright, uh, so you can put it on the very edge of the tin. These are two uh, reflective, not reflective, two ref, uh, red discs for turning flashlights into red flashlights for night preservation in conjunction with dimming the light. Turning it red helps preserve uh, night vision somewhat. This is uh, right in the rain paper for uh, taking notes or uh, leaving a note and it's waterproof so you don't have to worry about it getting wet. Inside the tin, this is just the natural reflectivity of uh, this particular brand of uh, 
cinnamon Altoids tin. This is an old tin though. I don't know if the current ones are quite as reflective as this. And the inside of the tin has more electrical tape as well. And that's it for tin two. Oh, up next we'll talk about the laser. The Altoids tin bottom surface is nice and reflective. That's not its problem. It's the fact that it's like a funhouse mirror, so that it makes a very poor reflection past a few hundred feet. So it's a bad signaling mirror. I don't recommend it. This is the entire exploded view contents of tin number two. I've reconfigured the paracord wrap into my bracelet design. That takes about 90 seconds. And I've removed the batteries from both the laser and the flashlight as a reminder that by using the same battery in all my devices, each one acts as a backup battery to all the other devices. I think I carry a total of six AAA all in, one, in my one pocket system. Up next, we'll have a short preview of the laser signaling video. Till next time, thanks for watching. line generator attached.